the World Peace University. And I welcome each one of you in this four day international conference on eradication of biological and chemical weapons. Today, we are inaugurating on 23rd of June, 2020. And this four day international conference would go on till 26th of June. This online conference is being organized under the aegis of Dr. Vishwanath Karad, MIT World Peace University, organized by MIT School of Government, Bharatiya Chhatra Sansar, supported by UNESCO Chair. And it is indeed my honor and privilege to welcome all of you to this very, very important inaugural session of this four day international conference. My friends, it is indeed our honor and privilege to have the founder president of MIT World Peace University, the founder executive president of World Peace Center, Myers MIT Group of Institution, UNESCO chairholder, Professor Dr. Vishwanath Karat, sir, among us. Welcome, sir. We also have as the chief guest of this session, Honorable Justice K.G. Palkatanji, the former Chief Justice of India, former chairperson, National Human Rights Commission of India. Welcome, sir. We also have with us for this important session the Executive President of MIT World Peace University, Pune, and Chief Initiator of MIT School of Government, founder of Bharatiya Chhatra Sansad, National Teachers Congress, and National Women's Parliament, Sri Rahul V. Karat. Welcome, sir. We also have the presence of the Honorable Vice Chancellor of MIT World Peace University, Dr. N. T. Ra. We have with us as the guest of honor of this session, Honorable Dr. Rajendra Singhji, well-known water conservationist, waterman of India, and Chairman of Bharat Sangh. We have with us the guest of honor, Honorable Sri G. V. Sharma, IAS, Member Secretary of National Disaster Management of India. We are really, really honored to have all of you here. Thank you, thank you very much on behalf of the entire organizing committee. And now, we actually start with this session. I would like to request the moderator of this very first inaugural session of this conference, to Sadarshan Mundala share with us the concept of this over to you. Darshan, you are on mute. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, respected dignitaries uh, and the guests. Welcome, welcome to this four day gathering. Uh, Honorable Rahul, sir, revered professor, Dr. Karad, sir, uh, sir, and everyone, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, tech team, I would like to request you to give me access to present the content, please. Uh, tech team. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. So it's a privilege and honor to be part of this discussion. Uh, on the lines of what's actually happening right now globally. Uh, my guru, uh, revered professor, Dr. Vishwanath D. Karat, sir, during this lockdown one day, called me and said, Darshan, what are we doing with this world? We really need to get a grip on what is our ambition to grow and where do we want to grow? And where, and is, where is all of this leading us in all the of this leading us it in was, the uh, through that now, discussion, uh, through that discussion Oh, I'm sorry, there's an echo. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, just give me a moment. Uh, yeah, the echo is gone. So, yeah, and through it was through this discussion uh, that uh, revered Professor Dr. Vishwanadi Karad sir had an idea and he wrote an open appeal to the UN Secretary General for complete eradication and ban on biological and chemical weapons. It's through that journey today we are here for these four days of deliberation to really understand what these weapons are and how we are going to work on eradicating them. Uh, I'd like to, it has been actually an honor uh, because currently for UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, disarmament is a core part of his agenda. Actually, when he took over the role, he made it as one of his primary focus goals 
to really create a secure future for all of us. Um, so what I'm going to do is in next minute, I'm going to walk you through the why, the what, and the how. Why are we in this conference? What is it that we want to achieve? And how are we going to achieve it over the next four days? Uh, biological and chemical weapons are quite well known and the usage predates uh, the wars. It actually starts in the human hi history when people used to use carcasses, animal carcasses, throw them around just to create biohazard. Uh, now, there are multiple kinds of biological and chemical weapons out there. The statistics are in front of you. Just for example, if you look at anthrax, uh, which reaches at least 20 kilometers with a single spread, has ability to kill 95,000 people and impact or permanently disable 125,000 people in one go. So there is a massive issue of biological and chemical weapons globally. We could debate on where COVID stands, but at the end of the day, it's still a biohazard. Uh, so that's the why for why we are doing this. Also, there are about 16 countries who currently acknowledge that they own biological and chemical weapons. 11 have recorded the use of these weapons. There is multiple cases of security breach and neg negligence. Uh, closer to home, Bhopal happened. Uh, recently, Tuti Korean happened. Uh, we all are very well acquainted of what biohazards are of chemicals. It's also been an accelerator for climate change and accepted or unaccepted, many countries have used it until recently in 2018 in Syria, where there were allegations made of uh, chemical weapons being used. So I think the why of this problem is very clear to all of us. We really need to deal with this problem upfront and really raise a voice. And what is that voice that we want? The voice is the clarion call that has been given by revered Professor Dr. Vishwanath Karad sir, addressed to the UN Secretary General, requesting a complete and total ban on biological and chemical weapons. Towards that end, we've also created a change.org petition. And I invite you all as audience to sign, not only sign that petition, but also express your opinion so that we create a strong global youth movement to push for national and international agenda, uh, to push for this agenda on national and international platforms. Also, the idea of MIT World Peace University hosting this is because it's finally in the hands of academic institutions to make a voice, to stand up for right causes, because they are the ones who house the future of this world. So that's the what we want to achieve. And how are we going to achieve it? We are going to achieve it in next four days by discussing various aspects of, these, uh, of this problem, understanding the weapons, understanding the global ecosystems, understanding the current laws and how the and what is the change and what is the change that we need to really see to achieve a safe world, not only for ourselves in the future, but the generations to come. The world needs to become a much safer place. Uh, I would like to end with a quote from Bhagavad Gita. Sukadukhe same krutva, labha labho jaya jayo, tato yuddhaya yujyasva, naivam papam me vapsyasi. The quote speaks for itself. Fight for the sake of duty, treating alike happiness and distress, loss and gain, victory and defeat. Fulfilling your responsibility in this way, you will never incur sin. We are not saying we don't have to fight, but we are saying we need to have a good fight. And the good fight demands that it's ethical, it's, uh, it's living up to human standards, and it keeps in mind the Universal Declaration for Human Rights. With that, I conclude my opening remarks. I know we are eager to listen from the experts, uh, and I look forward to the four days of deliberations and the outcome of it. And I appeal once again to everyone to come sign the petition, make a noise in social media, in verbally, in your discussions. We need to drive this agenda, and we need to make this world a safer place for one and for all. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your opening remarks. Thank you very much for making the concept and the need of this uh, entire four days uh, conference important for all of us. Thank you very much for that. My friends, it's time when I move forward to the next point on agenda, where we all are going to join our hands, join our hearts digitally into one prayer that is extremely important for everyone who's involved or who's associated with MIT group of institutions. A prayer which is a gift of our beloved founder, Professor Dr. Vishwanath Gara, to all of us. Sir has given us this prayer, which tells us 
that not us, but the entire humanity, every creature on this planet is equally important and needs to be at peace. We call this prayer the world peace prayer. For last four decades, we all have been starting our day with this prayer. So I request you to join us in this prayer because this prayer does not talk about any caste, creed, religion, or any one particular section of society. I request each one of you to close your eyes and peacefully listen to this world peace prayer and please join your hearts in this prayer. I request my technical team to kindly relay the world peace prayer. Thank you very much my friends thank you very much for joining us in this important tradition and i'm sure you all must have experienced the peace within you it is all because of our beloved founder professor dr vishwanath karatsa that we can experience this peace every day in our hearts our our professor dr vishwanath karatsa has has contributed to this human society in many many different ways to bring peace, to make us understand what exactly is the importance of peace in each one of our lives. Recently, last year, we were fortunate enough to experience the dedication ceremony of a monumental work which was dedicated towards human peace, which is now popularly known as Philosopher Century Ganeshwara World Peace Prayer Hall and World Peace Library. All those who could experience the unveiling ceremony, the public dedication ceremony of it, they all were having one single thought in their minds that, yes, I could witness this, and I'm really fortunate of that. Well, I'm sure some of you would still have those feelings in their hearts, but for those who could not be part of it, I would like to request my technical team if they could please relay a small film on this philosopher, Shenshi Gyaneshwara, World Peace Prayer Hall, and World Peace Library to make all of us understand. Thank you. जिसका डिजाइन किसी वास्तुविद ने नहीं किया इस गुम्बद की विशेषता ये है कि गुम्बद के अंदर एक भी खम्बा या किसी भी तरह का सपोर्ट नहीं है इस भव्य प्रार्थना सभाग्रह में हजारों साधक अभ्यासक प्रार्थना ध्यान और योग कर सकते हैं यहां पर मन शांति की अनुभूति प्राप्त होती है लाइब्रेरी का क्षेत्रफल बासठ हजार पांच सौ स्क्वेयर फुट इतना है विश्व शांति लाइब्रेरी में हजारों ग्रंथों का अंतर्भाव है संत श्री ज्ञानेश्वर महाराज ने कहा था संपूर्ण विश्व ये ज्ञान स्वरूप है ये विश्व शांति लाइब्रेरी अत्याधुनिक और डिजिटल होगी यहाँ पर हजारों पाठक एक ही समय पठन और मनन कर सकते हैं 
चार मंगल स्तंभ जिस पर मंगल कलश विश्व के सबसे बड़े गुंबद के चारों दिशाओं में चारों वेदों की संकल्पना पर आधारित सुंदर एवं अद्वितीय चार मंगल स्तंभों का निर्माण किया है विश्व शांति और विश्व मांगल्य की कामना करने वाले ये स्तंभ है जिस पर भारतीय संस्कृति और परंपराओं का प्रतीक मंगल कलश की स्थापना की गई है मंगल कलश की ऊंचाई चौवन फुट है ये वास्तु संगे मरमर नक्काशी का एक बेनमून उदाहरण है इस गुंबद से मानव कल्याण का कार्य करने वाले संत वैज्ञानिक और तत्वज्ञ के चौवन पूर्णाकृति ब्रॉन्स की मूर्तियां यहां स्थापित की गई हैं। इस वास्तु में भारतीय संस्कृति के प्रतीक भगवान श्री राम गौतम बुद्ध भगवान महावीर संत ज्ञानेश्वर संत तुकाराम विश्व प्रसिद्ध वैज्ञानिक एरिस्टोटल सोक्रेटिस चार्ल्स डाबे महात्मा गांधी स्वामी विवेकानंद ऐसी महान विभूतियों की मूर्तियों का समावेश है इन मूर्तियों के सामने खड़े रहने के बाद अंतकरण में सकारात्मक ऊर्जा प्राप्त होती है संवाद के जरिए ये मूर्तियाँ तत्व ज्ञान का अमृत पिलाती हैं। ऐसा प्रतीत होता है Thank you very much for that video. Thank you very much for making all of us once again memorize and recollect all those beautiful memories we had from last year. Thank you very much, my technical team. Uh, I would now like to go ahead and request the person who not just saw this dream but made this dream come true, and give this entire humanity the gift that it deserved and was much needed for this time. it is now indeed my honor and privilege to request the honorable founder president of MIT world peace university founder executive president of world peace center mairs mit group of institutions the unesco chair holder professor dr vishwanath garad to give his welcome address and briefing on the concept and theme of the conference over to you sir thank you so much <laughs> professor rahul karad and darshan mandra mr bapat and their team to organize this such a international event and a very crucial issue of eradication of biological and chemical weapons especially on the background of the impending or the horrifying situation we are experiencing because of the covid-19 or what is called as a corona virus friends i i really never felt in my lifetime that i may have an experience of such horrifying particularly before i say a few words i must be grateful and be happy and i'd like to really say thank you so much and welcome to honorable justice kg balakrishnan sahab and honorable dr narendra singh ji it truly fills my heart with a sense of pleasure when i see such eminent thinkers and philosophers for this प्रॉब्लम का है
the technical team has to take some care. <laughs> My learned friends, Chief Justice of India. Thank you, thank you very much for joining us today. Born on 20th of May 1945, was the former chairperson of the National Human Rights Commission of India. He is the former Chief Justice of India. He was the first judge okay. from the state of Kerala and also from the scheduled caste background to become the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of India. His tenure, lasting more than three years, has been one of the longest in the Supreme Court. As an advocate, he pleaded both criminal and civil cases in the Ernakulam Court. He was later appointed as the Munsi in the Kerala Justice Service in 1973. He later resigned from the services and resumed practice as an advocate in the High Kerala High Court. 8th of June 2000, he was appointed as the judge of the Supreme Court and he was sworn as the Chief Justice of India on 14th of January 2007 by the APJ Abdul Kalamji.
after his retirement on 12th of May 2010. He has been serving since 7th of June 2010 as the chairman of the National Finance Commission. Thank you, thank you very much, sir, for your presence here today. Thank you very much for blessing us with your presence. Over to you for your opening remarks. Hello, hello. Mr. Mr. Vishnath Karad, the eminent educationalist of India, and his uh, active colleagues and dear friends, the Vice Chancellor of the University, and the members of the faculties of the university, and dear students. I'm very happy that the university has chosen to deliberate on a very vibrant uh, subject uh, for the four days uh, to discuss the nuances of all uh, all the problems related to the this uh, biological terrorism international terrorism of biological nature the it is i feel there should be a political will we should have eminent politicians uh, all over the world to lead the country though it is being done by the scientists it is the politicians who lead the country there should be very dedicated, loving the persons to head the country. Then only we, we can have the world peace. Another thing is that the United Nations should be infused with more power. Whenever there is a suspicion, the United Nations, a team of experts, the scientists, the policy, political leaders, and other people should have the authority to go and conduct search and find out the what is going inside the in that country but for the time being it is very difficult to inverse powers with the united nations but all the countries should put their heads together and infuse power to the united nations and see that the united nations get that power and a permanent team or but depending on the nature of the threat that is posed, they should have authority to go to the country, conduct search, and find out the reasons. And if there is a real threat, the country should be, the, the whole world should be saved from such a calamity. So it is very, very difficult proposition. But if we all, our effort put together, this sort of, this uh, conference is not a small thing. The, these sort of conferences <laughs> and the world opinion create world peace. And I wish all success to these, uh, the, these deliberations. And I am sorry that I could not uh, actively listen to the various deliberations that are going to take place. I will certainly, I am, I am sure. Because of my long relationship with the Vishwad Karad, he used to send all papers of the university to me. I hope the deliberations of this uh, conference also will be sent to me. With the, I, I, with this words, I formally inaugurate the session. Wish all success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry that I am leaving the conference. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Indeed, uh, it was our pleasure and honor to have you to inaugurate this very, very important four-day international conference on eradication of biological and chemical weapons. Now, uh, I'm sure all the technical glitches have been taken care of, so I would like to request once again the Honorable UNESCO Chairholder, Professor Dr. Vishwanath Karat, sir, to kindly address the gathering. Thank you once again to our guest, and especially, of course, uh, even, even though Honorable Justice Balakrishnan Sahab had to leave after this inauguration, I am grateful to him. And thank you so much, Rajendra Singh Sahab.
फ्रेंड्स वेरी ब्रीफली वंस अगेन आई वुड जस्ट इंफॉर्म यू that such a situation would arise and almost for two and a half months or three months the entire world would be locked down and possibly all the churches the temples the makkah madina mosque pandapur alandi and the various places were over they have been closed they have been shut down and as i said initially that i really wonder that no no order from any president or the prime minister of any country or even that matter from the UNESCO, united nations itself the world would never would have been closed like this it is most surprising that the cities like rome paris new york washington and london and many nations the powerful nations like america russia china uk france all these great nations including our india too and the neighboring countries are completely locked down and experiencing a horrifying silence all over this horrifying silence was never never felt before or was expected at all and as i said to you i repeat this friends that i being a teacher being a man of science i thought and i just had a discussion with the very great scientist of the world vijay badkar sir that what is the secret behind who is the commander who gave this command who gave this signal who had a remote control and the issue was it was the covid 19 or the corona virus which they say it's a man made virus it has been evolved from that one country one city of china now what a bad fortune i would say not a good fortune that it has caused a horrifying situation world over you know that hundreds of thousands of people are dying lakhs of people are affected and everyone let me tell you honestly every one of us they have a horrifying fear horrifying fear complex and possibly the fear of death i do not know then i am grateful to darshan and rahul that they have given me the complete details and thank you darshan that you gave a very nice presentation initially and showed us what has been the situation for so many years but i have been always thinking that whether such a horrifying situation would repeat again how long it will continue and this corona virus which has caused this horrifying situation world over then we thought of the whole scenario and let me tell you friends i am trying to show you the two small booklets in my hands one is called as a bell of hiroshima ringing once again conveying the message of world peace is the name this is the horrifying situation which was experienced at the hiroshima by the first hydrogen bomb which was dropped on hiroshima nagasaki you know how many lakhs of people and how many crores of people were affected and this one hydrogen bomb initially caused this horrifying situation it has been the most dreadful experience for the world community in hiroshima but that bell i feel sincerely in the form of this corona virus is giving a signal giving a warning and the bell on its own has started ringing once again and possibly that is through this corona virus or the covid 19 it's a invisible weapon invisible virus and as i said to you friends i feel and i have a duty myself and we have all a duty and then i requested darshan and mr rahul that why don't you call your young generation to think on this issue this is not a political issue amongst ourselves the question is the security council which has been controlling and trying to control the whole world but where are they now where is america where is china where is london where is paris where is rome 
they have been sitting inside the house. And this horrifying situation, now one has to find a solution. That's why, of course, I know I'm a teacher. I'm just a very ordinary teacher from engineering college, maybe heading some institution. But I said, and accordingly, I said to Darshan and Mr. Rahul too, that why don't you call the students' parliament, the world parliament of students and the educated people, what do they feel that there has to be some solution for this and we have to ban and stop this mad race, the rat race going on for creating the horrifying weapons. Friends, uh, you must be aware of that the world over, the weapons like hydrogen bombs, neutron bombs, and all other weapons produced like chemical and biological weapons, they can destroy this mother earth thousands of times. Such a stockpile has been created by the world community. And we are sitting on a ticking bomb, really, the whole of human race. Now the question is, we are making it ourselves. It's a man-made danger which has been created. So accordingly, at least, whether we can think of stopping under the name of research, under the name of development, these biological and chemical weapons need to be curbed. We have to stop this and give a ban on at least the, even the research in the name of virus or the biological weapons. The whole world just now, I think I'm grateful to Justice Balakrishnan Sahab, very briefly, but he gave a very wonderful message that we need to have somebody to control it. And I feel that it is the United Nations and Security Council which has to have the authority to even to check and find out which is the country trying to do some such things. And unless we take some appropriate steps regarding this, the future for humanity is not good. In the history of whole of humanity, the prevailing humanity that we have been seeing human beings, let me tell you friends, I'm showing you one small, another book which is called the nine universal secrets of and the principles of human life. The entire human race existing or prevailing on this mother earth, possibly our Rajendra Singh Sahib would be more appropriate authority. He's talking about the pollution control, the sustainable development, sustainable goals, and the water management and the other allied things. But can you imagine this is a question of sustainability of the human race itself. About mother nature itself. If it is a horrifying pollution like this or some virus like this can pollute and kill the human race and the living beings, what will be the future for the whole of the world is the main issue. We may not be the authority, but I appeal and request that the United Nations, the World Health Organization, and even especially to our visionary Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, who has been trying to do something and India has a role to play. I will say Mother India has a role to play. And we have to take an initiative and possibly using our own methods and techniques, which are so close to the rule of Mother Nature. They are the natural laws. When I said to you, friend, this very small book, all the nine secrets of the universe and the principles which have been enunciated by the great philosopher Saint Sri Dhaneshwara, I think initially, a mention was made about the philosopher and Naneshwara will be dome. This is not the biggest dome that is important. It's the biggest message. The message is that this will be, I tell you, friends, certainly, not with pride, not with ego. I am not the maker. I am not the doer. It has been evolved. It's a very big, big uh, issue behind. But let me tell you, friends, tomorrow, this is going to be a real wonderful pilgrim center of the knowledge divine, the knowledge part of it. And let me tell you, friends, in this booklet, which I've been giving the nine universal secrets, I'm more keen to understand what is the secret behind this virus. Who is the commander? Who is the secret maker? Who is secretly trying to do and make the whole human race suffer? That's the reason, and friends, remember, as Darshan said, Rahul said, Rahul has to yet to speak. I think he has to speak his mind, but he is taking a lead in this mission. And the world parliament, which has been going on for the last five, ten years, I think you are the people. You are the youngsters. Your future. If we make some mistakes, you are going to suffer again. And it will be our responsibility. That we are not at least cautioned, you people. But let me tell you, friends, that it is a duty. It's high time for all of us to take an initiative 
and minimize this impending danger. And let us not have a repetition of some such coronavirus. I don't know, yesterday there was a lecture. I asked the doctor that how long these masks will be there on our faces. Will it, whether it has a life, whether it's a certain virus which has a certain life, whether it gets finished or it gets finished the other humanity, the human race itself. So many things can be discussed, friends, but some great Nobel laureate has said that this is a man-made virus. It is not a natural one, not like a flu or not like a cholera or many dangers which Darshan has given the whole list of the Second World War and the various tools and weapons which were used being then that time too. Rows of people were killed. But are we to create a danger for ourselves? And what is going to be the result finally? Where will these great Security Council members and the greatest nations who have been mad after the power game, who are trying to develop such things, for what purpose? What is ultimately the gain which we are going to get? Let me tell you, we have a duty to the humanity as a whole and for the human race and all the living beings. And towards this mother earth, we have to make it sustainable. We have to allow this human race to sustain and continue and contribute something very beautiful, very better. And the solution, as was said by philosopher said Naneshwara, let me tell you, friends, once again, I said in the morning, the mechanism, being an engineer, I have just tried to understand this. This whole body mechanism, there is a body and the brain on one side. The soul and the mind is on the other side. The body and the brain can be understood with scientific laws, scientific principles. But the soul and the mind, which is invisible, it can be understood only by the spiritual component. The scientific and spiritual component put together makes a universal component. Universal law, universal secret, which I am trying to put it in this small booklet. And possibly this may give a small glimpse to the whole of the present scientific world. Let me honestly tell you, friends, the Dr. Penrose, Dr. Einstein, Dr. Schrodinger, the great men, they have already stated that at the end of the scientific game going on, scientific world reaching the climax, of the Facebook and the Google and the internet, what we are trying to do. The time and space has, the dimension has changed. I'm talking to where you are sitting, I don't know, but I have a dialogue like sitting in front of me. This has been possible through science. The question is to put the science and spiritual component together. That makes our duty and that's the only pathway to understand this secret and the horrifying danger of this coronavirus. And that's why the appeal made by uh, Darshan and Bapat, I think we need to come together, please friends, let us not forget our duty, duty to the well-being of the entire mankind. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your words and thank you very much for your wisdom that you all share, you share with all of us. It is really important to understand the views and it is really important for all of us to understand our duties towards our upcoming generations. As Sir rightly said, that mistakes that we commit in our lives, our future upcoming generations would have to pay for it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your views. Moving forward, we have with us on the panel, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of MIT World Peace University, Dr. N.T. Rao, sir. I would like to request him to kindly address the gathering. Uh, thank you, Gautam. At the outset, I would like to uh, invite all the participants, especially Justice Balakshnan sir, who had uh, just left, and uh, Rajendra Singh ji, and uh, uh, Shri Sharma. And I'm privileged and honored that on behalf of Dr. Vishnath Karad, World Peace University, the mighty World Peace University, we are hosting this event. And we could have held an event, a webinar on any topic. Why did we choose this? The very fact that our university, the name of our university in Sanskrit, Vishwa Shanti Vishwa Vidyalaya, Vishwa Shanti Vishwa Vidyalaya is looking for Vishwa Shanti, world peace. It's not only in our name and every action, every thought, every deed we do under the blessings of our founder, President Reverend Vishnath Karat, sir. The very, this uh, webinar is an example for that. 
and we have about 600 uh, participants in which some of them may be some students and let i thought i'll set the context not exactly the context what's the genesis what do we call these chemical weapons is it uh, did they happen yesterday or say maybe last year or maybe about a decade ago if you look back it's as old as uh, 430 bc frozen horse we all of us we know the greek story and what happened so there also the uh, chemical weapons have been used from that point of time some uh, world war one but nearly uh, early part of the century uh, last century 125,000 people have been killed using chemical weapons that's when the world thought is yes, we need to do something and simple in 1925 geneva protocol came in they said let's not use chemical weapons they never said don't produce weapons so it took some people took advantage some nations okay for our defense we need to have we will not use but we'll produce weapons so that's how the whole uh, scenario was there and right now today we are really afraid of uh, chemical and uh, biological weapons the world as our uh, reverend uh, president uh, Vishnath Karatsar has mentioned the whole world is in the grip of a, we may not call it as a biological weapon, but definitely a pandemic. A pandemic is uh, creating a havoc in the lives of every single individual on this planet Earth. So can't we do something about that? Is, do we simply see? Do we simply watch? So in that context, the MIT World Peace University embarked upon not another webinar where big minds of different peers would come together and resolve, make resolutions and we make an appeal to the United Nations. It's not a simple uh, one more webinar and one more uh, this thing. So this is the way we look, the Vishwa Shanti Vishwa Vidyala World Peace University. That's how we set our standards and our goals so that collectively together, it's not one person, it's not the vice chancellor of the university writing to the United Nations. All of us together, we collectively talk, deliberate and come to a conclusion Ask these resolutions to United Nations to work towards a world that is peaceful, which is uh, free of their biological and chemical weapons. So, with that view, we started this, and we request all of you to actively participate and contribute towards world peace uh, through MIT World Peace University that we are trying to take up on. Uh, I once again welcome all of you, and thank you very much for coming and attending this event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. N.T. Rao, Honorable Vice Chancellor of MIT World Peace University, for addressing the entire gathering and put it, uh, putting forth his views. Thank you very much, sir. Now, it's indeed my honor and privilege to welcome on dais the next, our guest of honor of this particular session, Honorable Dr. Rajendra Singhji, well known water conservationist, the waterman of India, and chairman of Tarun Bharat Sun. But before I invite him, it is my honor and privilege to introduce him to all of you. Dr. Rajendra Singh was born on 6th of August, 1959. is an Indian water conservationist and environmentalist from Alwar district, Rajasthan in India. Also known as the Water Man of India and won the Maxisse Award in year 2001 and Stockholm Water Prize in 2015. He runs an NGO called Tarun Bharat Sang TVS, which was founded long back in India 1975. He is one of the members of the National Ganga River Basin Authority, which was set up in 2009 by the Government of India as an empowered planning, financing, monitoring and coordinating authority for the Ganges in exercise of the powers conferred upon under the Environment Protection Act 1986. It is an important, in his important event in his life came in year 1974, when still in high school, Ramesh Sharma, a member of Gandhi Peace Foundation, visited their family home in Meerut. This opened up Mr. Rajendra's mind to issue issue of the village improvement as Sharma went about cleaning the village. And this is something that triggered his mind and took up many, many socially sensitive responsibilities in, in his life. My friends, if I have to talk about the awards and honors he has had, I mean, I, the, the list is really, really big. In year 2001, the Raman Maxisse Award for the community leadership in 2001 for his pioneering work in community-based efforts in water harvesting and water management. 2005, Jamnal Al Bajaj Award for application of science and technology for rural development. In 2008, the Guardian named him again amongst the 
its list of 50 people who have, could have saved the planet and many, many more. It is indeed our honor and privilege to have you here with us today, sir. I welcome you on this dais and I request you to address the gathering. Over to you, sir. Rahul, Darshan, and uh, Rao, and uh, today Chief Guest uh, Justice K.G. Balakrishnanji, and my dear friend. Uh, today, yes, situation is a really woke this world, and everyone is feared. But why this situation come? Because the greediness of the profit economic net creation and leadership. The China nowadays, he is thinking he is the first line leader of this world and his greediness creating virus two times. The first virus, coronavirus in 2002 and now the second corona the called SAC2 is in 2019, the other name is COVID. The COVID, you see this virus, this virus, a lifeless virus, no life. But this virus, when entered in the human body, the change of all things, and the, our body not recognize he is our anti antibody or he is the in the body. So, jab lalaj kisi ko dhoka dene lagta hai, so now this is the COVID-19, a real virus who create a hivog. And I say this is a, this is a real, real, real peace evolution, revolution. If we want a peace, so we can learn from the COVID-19. If we really change for the peace, so now we can understand this virus war, what type of the situation creating in this world. And very simple, a hardly not big thing, very, very, very easy. So this is the, this is the disaster of the technology and engineering and science. When the science fulfill the greatness of the humankind, so the science moving to the profit, only for profit, only creating the leadership for the profit. So now the leadership of the profit in the mind of the China and the China want a great leader in economy <clears throat> of the right. world. And this greediness creating this the hivok situation. So, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, we have received a presentation from your side. You want us to put the presentation up for you because we have received it oh, from yes. your side. Yes, yes. If it is possible, I like. Yeah, that. because uh, yeah, we uh, we have some around uh, 10, 15 minutes from now, and yes, we can put up the presentation for you. It's on, sir. Please, you can go ahead. Thank you. You can go ahead, sir. Uh, technical team, is there any connectivity issue from sir's side? Uh, uh, yes, sir. I think there is a bandwidth issue. Bandwidth issue. Okay. Yeah, that yellow yellow triangle on the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, we'll wait for a couple of seconds. Otherwise... Uh, Nilesh. Go ahead. Nilesh, call him immediately and see if there any yes, assistance sir. he requires. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you reach on uh, second slide. My dear friend, this is the modern problem is the real problem of the this world is the war is coming on our gate and uh, this war is reaching in our house why because the pupils is migrating from africa and central western asian country to europe 
and the all europe feel the threaten to the dangerous landscape because the population moving toward there so the war is war reaching now in the in the everywhere in a different way this is the chemical and virus war but the war is third world water war is also coming because of forced migration and these now the all environmentalists what they are saying no national government listening them the only they are listening to the corporate if the corporate is speaking something so the government every government listening so the all angerness of the activist and environment activist to the against the national government but the government is not bothered so my dear friend now the situation is the war because the government not moving toward to the ethic and not moving to the justice they are not giving the justice to the ecology and environment and nature and not they are giving to the justice to the human kind and but also the the problem is with the pupil the pupil believe like india believe in the god and the god means land water air sun is space these five element is the god of this uh, this country but now the everyone moving to the temples they are forget the gods they are just reaching to the uh, stone temples so this is the big change because the stone temple is a center of the business center of the economy so now everything is moving to the economic profit competition net the everyone forget the security केवल लाभ के चक्कर में सब लग गए हैं शुभ को भूल गए हैं शुभ अब हमारे जीवन का हिस्सा नहीं रहा केवल लाभ हमारे जीवन का हिस्सा रहा है इसलिए हमें नेक्स्ट इसलिए हमें यदि इन चैलेंजेस को ये जो ये जो मॉडर्न ग्लोबल चैलेंज हैं क्लाइमेट चेंज के नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नेक्स्ट स्लाइड यस यदि इन चैलेंज इफ वी थिंक अबाउट द मॉडर्न ग्लोबल चैलेंजेस एंड वी एक्सप्लोर सम सॉल्यूशन सो द सॉल्यूशन इज वेरी सिंपल वी कैन स्टार्ट कम्युनिटी ड्रिवन डिसेंट्रलाइज मैनेजमेंट ऑफ नेचर एंड वी कैन क्रिएट ए रूरल नेचुरल इकोनॉमी ऑलवेज द सेंट्रल ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी एक्सप्लोइड टू एवरी वन बट द डिसेंट्रलाइज इकोनॉमी community driven economy never exploit to anyone so that economy nourish to everyone so we can think about this uh, rural natural economy decentralized economy next next presentation you know the last year 19 state and uh, 365 district facing the water scarcity and uh, 190 district facing flood so after the independence the 10 time fold drought and scarcity and 8 time fold the flood so this is the flood and drought is the disaster for the human kind next 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 slide because our all university teaching us the technology of the exploitation pollution and encroachment the management teaching encroachment engineering and technology teaching maximum use of natural resource so we the teaching to the extraction and exploitation due to the that education modern education we exploit the underground aquifer the india exploited 72% underground aquifers our all reserve water reserve bank is empty and overdraft we if we we create the overdraft our reserve bank so what is the future you can think my dear friend next slide because we not give the respect to the science the science and technology moving different way 
the, the science with sense and science with common sense always related with spiritual spirituality if you are using technology and engineering that moving to the extraction and exploitation and pollution and encroachment so if we can correlate with the science and technology so we can explore the sustainable solution but we are not moving in this line my teacher is a illiterate farmer so he teach me the science with the common sense and that science he completed my phd in one day in geo hydro science and next day he completed my phd in environment engineering so the environment engineering and natural engineering and geo hydro science we correlate and we create the water bodies 11800 water bodies the all water bodies next slide next slide the all, next slide the all water bodies with the respect of the aquifers we give the respect to the all underground aquifers in my rivers have the six type of the aquifers so we give the respect them and we choose the site and choose the uh, all site selection with the respect of the aquifer so my all water body recharging the aquifer due to the recharging the aquifer my river is flowing next next presentation the next The all illiterate people who migrate rivers migrate from the city to rural area, so they start the resource mapping of the village. How much water come in the rainy season and how much going plus flood? So we start the resource mapping and we start the site selection with the community decision. All sites selected by the community and they create the water bodies. And due to that water bodies, that is created Sanatan Vikas. The Sanatan Vikas means Sadev Nitya Nutan Nirman. Uh, that is the meaningful, more than uh, sustainable. But this Sanatan Vikas gives the greenery and uh, they address the issue of the climate change. Next. You know, we choose the site where the, we can recharge the aquifer. Next. Where the store, steep slope, we can make a convex design. Where the convex concave design, gentle slope. And these natural sites we choose. Next. 11,800 water body recharge the 250,000 wells. Due to the recharging the wells, the reverse migration start and they do the agriculture and increase the greenery. So before that, no well have the water and people is migrate to the cities. Now they have the water and they, they doing agriculture. Next, next, the before you can see the impact before this river is dry and people migrated into the city in 98 up to 1985. After 2000. This river is perennial and flowing and change the, change the color of the area. You can see the impact uh, the same day, the both photograph the same day and same place. And same photographer after 15 years, you can see that this is the place of the river origin. Next slide. Next slide. And this is the end of the river. Before the, this river is dry, the same 20th February, and now this river is flowing perennial. So, the climate I think we are facing some uh, bandwidth issue from Sir's side. Nevertheless, we'll wait for a few seconds.
be really short and crisp. And uh, please post it with your name so that we can uh, ask the uh, esteemed speakers the questions. Please post them uh, personally to me. You can see my name in the Q&A. You can post questions to me so that uh, I can share the questions with the uh, panelists. Please, I request, please do not post them in chat box. We'll not be able to reach out to them. Please post them to me in questions and answers. My name is Gautam Bapat. So please uh, post the questions to me so that I'll be able to read them for the uh, dignitaries on the dais. I request you once again to keep your questions really, really short and crisp. We'll wait for a few more seconds before we uh, proceed. Thank you. Technology is sitting on the head. So this type of the problem come. Please proceed, sir. We can see you now. Please proceed. Okay. So uh, this change, the river is flowing. We create the 12 river is now before the more than 17 lakh people displaced. And now due to the river rejuvenation and water come, the people come on the land, on a, on a, on land and they are doing agriculture. Next slide. Next slide. You can see the NASA, uh, National Remote Center, Center, Hyderabad. The, what is the difference? That say, due to this water conservation, the immense increase the vegetation is clearly in this region. Due to the vegetation, the now the lot of good rains coming in my area. The 10,800 square kilometer area, very good rains now in after 1996. Very good rains and the all all changed. When I start this work, only two percent green D. Now the 48, 42 percent green D increase. You can see this slide next. Next. So we have started uh, pouring in many questions also. So uh, let's let's keep uh, yes, some time just, to this just, for just the questions. Two minutes, just, just two minutes you give. Just I, sure, I'm singing sure, a small sure. song. When I start the work, my local woman, old woman singing the song. Badal to aate hai mere gaon mein, par baraste nahi hai wo, root kar chale jaate hai kaha. मैं नहीं जानती जब पानी नहीं रहा तो मेरा बेटा और बहू भी रूठ कर चले गए मुझसे अब मैं रह गई हूं अकेली अपने गांव में मुझे नहीं लगता मैं कहती हूं बादल से तू बरस जा मेरे गांव में पर वो बरसता नहीं है वो निष्ठुर रूठ कर जाता है कहां मैं नहीं जानती ये 37 ईयर बिफोर ऑल वुमेन सिंगिंग दिस टाइप ऑफ द सॉन्ग इन द माय रीजन now the change of singing song ab badal aate hain mere gaon mein baraste hain wo rootte nahi hai wo ab mere khet aur kuye mein aa gaya hai pani mera beta aur bahu bhi laut aaye hain mere ghar par ab mujhe lagta hai ki mera budhapa mere budhape ke din acche se guzrenge hariyali mein aur mere bete ki khushali mein मैं भी रहूंगी खुशहाल मेरे इस पानी ने मेरे जीवन को बनाया है खुशहाल तो दोस्तों जब मनुष्य ग्रीडीनेस से ऊपर उठकर लाभ के चक्कर से हटकर व्हेन द वूम ह्यूमन ग्रीडीनेस लेस एंड द रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ नेचर स्टार्ट सो द क्लाइमेट चेंज एडेप्टेशन स्टार्ट नाउ यू कैन सी द डिफरेंस We are facing again some uh, technical glitch. Uh, but I'm sure we'll be able to hear him again in the questions and answers because, uh, of course, we are receiving many, many questions for Sir. We uh, hope by the time we reach questions and answers, we would be able to see him back without any technical glitch. Uh, thank you, Sir. Thank you very much uh, uh, for addressing the entire gathering and your words were really, really motivating. And when we were, when you were reciting the composition, uh, I was personally was confused that whether I should look at the composition, how beautifully the words are, uh, 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 words or 
किया गया है शुड आई पे अटेंशन टू द ब्यूटी ऑफ इट और शुड आई पे अटेंशन टू दी द पेन विद इन इन दोज वर्ड्स बट येस डेफिनेटली द मैसेज हैज रीच लाउड एंड क्लियर टू अस Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for being there, and please be there because we have many, many, many questions for you. But uh, before okay. I take any questions, I would like to go ahead with the next guest of honor of this particular session, Honorable Sri G V V Sharma Ji, I, and it is indeed my honor and privilege to introduce him to all of you. Sri G V V Sharma, the I A S Member Secretary of National Disaster Management Authority N D M A. Sri G V V Sharma is currently serving. as the member secretary of the national disaster management authority shri sharma joined the indian administrative services in 1986 and has obtained a masters degree in physics he is also he has also worked in the experts group set up by the planning commissions on tribal land alienation and he worked in the ministry of home affairs government of india from 2010 to 2015 He served as the member secretary of the task force constituted by the government of India and for review of the Disaster Management Act in year 2005. He had an opportunity to work in the super cyclone in 1999 in Odisha and the coordination task related to the floods of 2013 in Uttarakhand. In the cyclone of 2013 September 2014 floods in JNK and the cyclone of 2014 it is indeed our honor and privilege to have you in this particular session with us sir i would now request you to kindly address the gathering over to you sir uh, good afternoon i am thankful to the organizers for having given me this opportunity first of all i would like to mention for the kind consideration of all the dignitaries that the people in this webinar need not be convinced regarding the importance of sustainable development or regarding how to make this world free from mass weapons of mass destruction because we are all convinced that is why we are all here so therefore what i would like to submit is that there is no real need to reiterate the point which is already known to all of us but rather we should try to move further towards the instrumentalities and as a civil servant i would like to see from the legal point of view what are the legal safeguards available now by way of international conventions as you know there is a very important biological weapons convention and this convention has been accepted by the world community and this biological weapons convention was ratified by india and even though it has got some limitations in the sense that it does not have an international verification regime but there is lot of scope available and the biological weapons convention has got 15 important articles and the first article says never under any circumstances develop produce stockpile acquire or retain biological weapons article 2 says all the signatories have to destroy or divert to peaceful purposes any biological agents toxins weapons equipment and means of delivery prior to joining this convention so like that there are important legal conventions which are now part of the international law which are governing the biological regime similarly on the chemical weapon convention this was adopted by the un conference on disarmament and it has got key points of the convention number 1 is that all production and use of chemical chemical weapons are prohibited then all the existing chemical weapons or production facilities have to be destroyed then all chemical weapons including chemical weapons weapons which are abandoned are outside the states party's territory even such weapons have to be destroyed 
then assistance between the state parties and the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons which is a part of the un organization this assistance should continue between all the nations and the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons similarly the opcw has a inspection regime and they conduct the inspection on production of chemicals which might be converted into chemical weapons all cooperation must be extended for this external body this is part of the international law now similarly international cooperation in the peaceful use of chemistry and the science that is also reiterated in this convention so what i would like to submit is that the important thing to know is that while the problems may be there in the world there are also effective methods which are being developed and which are being used by the countries themselves so that workable solutions and tools are being developed with this background i would like to come to the question which has been repeatedly uh, asked in some of the previous sessions today that whether what we have now that is this covid 19 scenario is a product of any such biological intervention from outside the country now my submission is that as disaster management professionals and as the public of india our concern should be how to deal with the present disaster and especially in the context of covid 19 the manner in which we collectively deal or we are required to deal with this disaster is not dependent on whether it is uh, spontaneous or whether it is man made or whether it is engineered it, it it does not matter all that requires is how our preparedness can be stepped up and how people themselves can contribute by following the physical distancing norms how to wash hands regularly with soap water or alcohol based rub how to maintain physical distance of at least two meters from one another and how to ensure wearing of mask so as far as the common public are concerned these are extremely important tools by which to a considerable extent the spread of infection can be reduced and while leaving it to the experts and to the professionals on looking into the origin and looking into the verifiability or evidence collection that is a separate scientific subject the scientific experts will be doing their job but what i submit is that as far as the communities are concerned the communities like we are all prepared to have a community based system for disaster management in case of natural disasters like cyclone or flood we are all prepared we take the necessary steps we follow the do's and don'ts in the same manner even for the present covid 19 scenario also all of us have to prepare and step up the ability to contain the spread of the infection and that does not matter whether a cause of this action is x or y with these words i once again thank the organizers for having given me this opportunity to ask thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much for your thoughts and indeed it is uh, time that we uh, go for the questions and answers i'm sure sir if you can give us a little more time from your schedule for questions and answers uh, i have received many many questions so uh, let me quickly move to them uh, the first question is coming from mr sagar udasin and mr sagar asks is there a check to realize a, a particular lab uh, doing some uh, generous research and not making something uh, for biochemical war or something like that. So how is there any way to find out which lab is doing what basically? Is the question addressed to me? Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, I do not know. I, I do not know. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, 
Anyone in yeah. the panel would like to take this question? So, the, as of okay. now, uh, Darshan here, uh, yes. as of now, there yeah, are various yeah. protocols, uh, as Sir just mentioned, under OPCW and uh, Biological Weapons Convention. Uh, unfortunately, there's no mechanism to check on that, and that is what we are trying to address today uh, as a dialogue or as a gathering, is to really push the larger ecosystem go to come up with those cross-checking mechanisms. Like for nuclear uh, aspects, there are very strong mechanisms, and countries have to, under non-proliferation treaty, have to permit investigation of their nuclear sites. Okay. Unfortunately, for biological and chemical weapons, none of that exists. Oh, Thank true. Thank you very much. I hope Mr. Sagar has uh, got his answer. Thank you very much for the question. Next question is coming uh, from uh, Rajesh Panchamiya. Uh, okay, uh, next. Uh, I, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the next question is coming from uh, Mutharsan. I'm sorry if I'm not able to uh, uh, pronounce it. The question is, how would uh, be India's future in terms of converting seawater to drinking water project? So I think this question is quite intended to the waterman of India, but uh, if he's available, uh, the question is, I repeat, uh, what, what food, how, how would be the future India's future in terms of converting seawater into drinking water? Anyone from the panel, please? Yeah, if I am allowed to uh, answer, I would say that yeah. already this work is going on. And uh, uh, for your information, in Andaman and Nicobar Island, now drinking water facilities are available by conversion from the seawater. So technically it is possible and it has been demonstrated. It is possible to develop them on a mass scale also. So the steps are going on by the government in that direction. Thank you. Thank you very much for that answer. Next question is coming from Dr. Samit Kumar uh, Majumdar. And Dr. Samit asks, how uh, consciousness against uh, biological weapons and chemical weapons can be developed among these students? Well, it's a very, very important question. And on a university forum, in, yes, indeed, it is an important question. So how consciousness uh, against the uh, biological weapons and the chemical weapons can be developed among these students? I think this is exactly what your university yes. is doing right now through the forums, yeah. <laughs> through the workshops yes. and seminars and 